Claimed national championships. We review right here at the Voice of College Football, GBR. Welcome into our series where we look at national championships that are claimed by particular schools, review the ones that are claimed, look at some other seasons in which they could possibly claim and make our judgment. Leave your comments down below. Please like the video. If you do nothing else, please like the video. Even if you don't agree with me, if you enjoy the content, and our analysis, discussion, and debate of college football, like the video. Nebraska fans, we go live with you each and every Tuesday at 6 Central. Be here for Huskers Live. Let's look at those national championships. These are the five that are claimed. In 1970, the Huskers went 11-0-1. They tied USC. They had a great season in which they beat LSU in the Sugar Bowl. There were two other undefeated teams. No question that their schedules were not of the same status as Nebraska, talking Toledo and Arizona State. Three one-loss teams of high caliber, Ohio State, Texas, and Notre Dame. But again, they lost games. Nebraska did not. 11-0-1 in 1970. Nebraska, yes, claim and keep that national championship of 1970. On to 1971, 13-0. And of course, capped off in the regular season by that historic Johnny Rogers performance against Oklahoma this Huskers team beat three ranked teams, including, yes, number two, Oklahoma, 35-31 in the game of the century. A number of one-loss teams to look at and recognize, including Alabama, Penn State, Michigan. And, of course, the Huskers finished off the tide big in the Orange Bowl, 38-6. 1971, one of the greatest teams of all time. There is no question Nebraska is your national champion of 1971. In 1983, Nebraska had one of the greatest teams of all time, were a heavy favorite in the Orange Bowl, almost won the national championship, narrow miss there. We will get to that in just a second, but on to the next claimed national championship. 1994, 13-0, beat five ranked teams, including Miami. Finally getting Nemesis Miami 24-17 in the Orange Bowl. Keep in mind that Penn State also went 12-0, beat four ranked teams, Texas A&M, 10-0-1. We just take note of the Aggies, 10-0-1. The tie knocks them out. Nebraska may have had one of the great teams of all time, may have been better than Penn State, but they need to share this championship. We've got two major teams with difficult schedules coming out of major big-time conferences. The only fair thing, share the championship. But Nebraska, 1994, keep your national championship. On to 95, of course, culminated by the tremendous dominant showing in the Fiesta Bowl against Florida. 62-24 in that game against the Gators. No close games for the Huskers. They were dominant. They were the best. They were the undisputed national champions with five ranked wins and a final record of 12-0. 1995, Nebraska, of course, keep your national championship. Then we move on to 1997 and Tom Osborne's final season with the Huskers. Here we go. 13-0, beat four ranked teams. They did have the kick six against Missouri. If not for a little luck, a lot of luck, a lot of luck. <laughs> they lose to Missouri, but they pull it out in overtime. 45-38, drubbed Peyton Manning in Tennessee in the Orange Bowl, 42-17. Michigan, not looking as impressive down the stretch, and certainly in their bowl game, the Rose win against Washington State, uh, barely winning that game. Let's see, 21-16, yes. But both teams played legitimately top-notch schedules. Actually, Michigan's schedule was probably better. Six ranked teams, Nebraska four. Again, we're not going to make a determination. The two teams should have played. They just flat out should have played. That's all there is to it. So it needs to be a shared national championship in 1997. But Nebraska, you've claimed five. You get five. You've got five legit, solid, strong national championship seasons. But does Nebraska have more? We're not just reviewing national championship seasons. We're looking at other seasons in which that particular program could claim a national championship. Let's go back into the archives. 1902. We have claimed national championships going back into the 1800s. This is so difficult to look at. Basically, I'm trying to determine, okay, first of all, what are the records across the country? Who's undefeated? If there are any undefeated teams, this Nebraska team went 10-0. and There were seven undefeated, untied teams. 
Michigan was the team that was declared the national champion. You know what, Nebraska, 1902, you're 10 and 0. I hate to do it in a sense because we would like to, as college football fans, as sports fans, know that there is one champion for every season, but we know the history of college football and these teams not playing one another and no playoff. Nebraska claim a national championship for 1902, 1903. Princeton and Michigan claim national championships. Nebraska went 11-0 in 1903. What else could they do? Nebraska claim that freaking national championship in 1903. Get it. On to 1913. 8-0. Seven undefeated teams. Nebraska beat two of the best teams in the country that year as well. Minnesota and Iowa. They were powerhouses at the time. Huskers. Claim a national championship for 1913. Go ahead. You can do it. You've got the right. Let's move on to 1915. We are still pre-1920, and we are claiming national championships for Nebraska. 8-0, Colorado Agricultural, Oklahoma, Cornell, Duke, Washington, Washington State. They all went undefeated. Nebraska did as well. Claim a national championship in 1915 again. There could be a disclaimer here that at some point in time, we got to a level of legitimacy in regards to teams playing uh, capable schedules and playing enough games to claim national championships, but I'm not going to go through that right now. Based on the record and the level of competition, claim a national championship, Nebraska in 1915. I looked through a number of other seasons, including 1914, 33, 39, 63, and 65. I won't review those seasons, but believe me, Nebraska was close, but should not, nor do they deserve or have they earned a claim for a national championship in those seasons. That brings us to 1983. And your initial response, if you're a Nebraska fan, is what you got for us, Mark. Your response, if you're a just a college football fan in general is probably like, well, Mark, they were a great team. They were phenomenal, but they lost the Orange Bowl. Well, let's keep this in mind. The Orange Bowl, or no postseason game, was a playoff game. It was a, another game. We view it in retrospect too much as, okay, there was this regular season, then we played a bunch of bowl games, and they were playoff games. So how could possibly a team that lost a bowl game win or share a national championship, but we allow and award teams that lost games in the regular season national championships. They're all the same. These were not playoff games. They were postseason games that were not regularly scheduled, but they're not playoff games. So in this situation, we've got Nebraska 12 and one, Miami 11 and one. Miami wins head to head. If that's all the teams that had to be considered that season in 1983, then yes, I would clearly say, regardless of how excruciatingly close that game was, Miami won the national championship over Nebraska due to the head-to-head win. However, we need to consider everyone that should be considered. Texas went 11-1. and They lost by one point in the Cotton Bowl to Georgia on a muffed punt with four minutes left to play. And Texas, at that point in the Southwest Conference, played as difficult a schedule as anybody. They played in a power, power power-packed league. Also, consider that Auburn played a tougher schedule than any of the teams considered. And I don't think there's any doubt Auburn played the best schedule, the toughest schedule in the country. Auburn lost to Texas, so Texas notched a win against Auburn. Texas lost to Georgia, one of the top teams in the country, at 10-1-1. Auburn finished off its season with seven ranked wins. Auburn also won the Sugar Bowl against the top 10 Michigan team. So we've got Texas, Auburn, Miami, all 11 and 1. We've got Nebraska 12 and 1. Again, if we were matching up Miami and Nebraska, it goes Miami's way based on head to head competition. However, we are looking at the credentials of four teams. And since Texas beat Auburn, and Auburn beat the best schedule, in the country, Texas lost by one point, and Nebraska lost by one point to Miami. Miami lost by 25 points to Florida. You know what this is in 1983? It's a shared national championship. Nebraska claim another national championship in 1983. That was not a playoff game he lost to Miami. 
It was an important game that earned Miami a share of the national championship. But Nebraska, you are still the 83 national champion in a share with Auburn, Texas, and Miami. Nebraska, Husker Nason probably loves me at this point. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five more national championships. That's the way it's done here at the Voice of College Football. We push the voting to the side, the flawed voting from the past, and we look to see what was earned. And for Nebraska, it's 10 outright or shared national championships. Your comments below right here at the Voice of College Football. We will see you next time. Please hit that like button on your way out. Tell people that we're here talking Nebraska football each and every day with you.